help us to read and struggle to, to work very, very hard. I could remember one of the passages I read when I was in primary for Abu Leaf in the town of Mansa Konko. I still sing that. <laughs> and it resonates because I, that was uh, one of the things that uh, it was I a, really a liked. a poem, a song, what was no, it? No, no, it uh, was it was like, uh, it was more of our English uh, okay. syllabus. Okay. Yes, ah, it, yeah. it's a passage in that mm -hmm. particular book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It really. So, don't judge the book by the cover. Why that title? What yes. is the message? Are you telling us something <laughs> here? What are you telling us? Don't judge the book by the cover uh, resonates a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the title of the book, it's like a metaphor. At the same time, the, the title itself shows Fatu's hidden talent in the book. Someone who... Summarize who the story for us. Just summarize the story for us, then you tell us about that. Who yes, is Fatu? Yes. Summarize in, in, the story. In, in summary, don't mm -hmm. judge the book by the cover. Mm -hmm. It's simply telling us that uh, we don't just need to develop that bad interest in reading without opening the book and read. I wanted people to use that adage to be able to open books and read them to know what is in them. Because I was advocating for literacy. So one of the fastest way of coming up with uh, a hashtag or something that will draw them and absorb them into the book was to say, don't judge the book by the cover. Because you know Gambians don't read, even to buy a newspaper for $10 or so. They find it very difficult to do so. Okay, so I wanted them to have that interest, that incipient interest, you know, mm -hmm. for reading and literature. That's why I thought it was very necessary to say, you know what, don't judge the book by the cover. You need to open and read the chapters, the pages to know what the author is talking about. Because what reading and writing, you know, and cooking here in common is that they must both whet the appetite of their consumers. If you're cooking Benetchin, you need very rich ingredients to have that. If you're also writing a book, you need to, you know, work extra hard to make sure that you know the topic, your audience and all those things. So writing and cooking, what they share in common is that they must both whet the appetite of their consumers, the readers. Mm -hmm. and but, but some people might say that when I look at this younger g g generation, um, they, they really hardly really talk. Whenever I see a group, everybody is reading their phone. Maybe it's a gossip, whatever it is. People are possibly reading today more than they are talking whenever I see a group. So maybe the idea is reading books. Or how can we take books to the phones, <laughs> as it were? How do we respond to, to, to this view? You are now entering my field of study. <laughs> I didn't tell you I read library and information. So as an information literate, let me quickly hasten to clarify that we are moving very smoothly to the 21st century. In the 21st century, OK, uh, as it ends very quickly, we, when we approach the 22nd century, we are going to see a U-turn when it comes to our literacy globally. What I'm trying to ascertain here is that whether you hold a PhD, you have a double doctorate degree, it has no use and value. It will be not important at all in the 22nd century if you cannot think. Employers will would be looking for people say that who even are right now. Employers I mean, will any be employer, it has started. Yeah, That's what I said. We are in the end of the 21st yeah. century. So when we, we get into that particular time, we will be looking for people who can think outside the box, people who can bring something on the table. So this is why that shift that mental digital shift, I will call it, mental digital shift, is actually affecting everything when it comes to information. And this includes what you have just said. You said people read even on social media, on phones, yes, but what do they read? That, do that, you want that, to tell me that? Because by calling it mental digital, you're giving me the impression that, do you think that the digital has actually changed the mental? In what sense? Yes, because technology has made us, made us dull. It has made us live on the face of the earth like a flock of sheep. It has made us not to develop interest in reading anymore. It made us lazy. We are very lazy in terms of reading. Not everyone, though, but most people feel a little bit That's it. I lazy was about to ask when it comes you, how to reading. How do you know? <laughs> I mean, have you seen studies carried out on even the studies that I've seen? Yes. They've got mix a mixed picture. Some writers are saying one thing, or the writers are saying something else. I am not sure if there is a consensus yeah, on the effect of, of technology on the, on the mind processes. I am not sure if there is any consensus on that.
How would you respond to that? Yeah. Yes, the response is simple and straightforward. Technology has a very big impact on reading and literacy. Because by then, people were forced to sit for hours, to sit for maybe for like a whole period, trying to finish one particular book, try to know what the author is saying. Technology made it easier. When something is easier and cheaper, it, it led to ineffectiveness. But and this book, is what is happening. Book, people became a little bit ineffective. ineffective. But the book was new technology. Yes. The book is technology it in, is, in it that is, sense. Indeed, Before then, yeah, nobody, we have digital, nobody could read like that. E-books, instructions. That's what that's I'm it. saying. So it going is easier. back to Gutenberg, going back even I think to the Chinese who invented printing. So that's all um, 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 technology. So technology has been around. It's just that it's been evolving. It's been changing over time. So I just want to test your thesis. So you think that with this evolution of technology, there's also an evolution of mentality. If you like, that's, that's a very there interesting we go. Concept, that was that was why I said mental digital shift. Mm. And I think now you see the mentality that I was trying to. Yeah, I'm at. just trying to explore yeah, it. So, it's a very so curious especially, concept, especially Africa and Africans. In some other parts of the world, it's better because those people are making the best use of that particular technology we are talking about. In terms of literacy, you know, you see students using tablets, for instance, in classrooms, and that is adding value to what they are learning. You understand? But in Africa, it's different. If they, if they in, use in it the right way, isn't in a positive it? Because way. we know that there's a lot of abuse of technology as well. It is a, it's a bit like the knife, you know, the paradox <laughs> of the knife. <laughs> I can use it for constructive things, also, but again, I can use it to destroy. That's there, the same there we go. The, there the, we the, go. The, the, so the like, let's, let's come to Gambia and Africa, for example, mm -hmm. where we are trying to use this technology as a topic to see how it is helping us. Mm -hmm. You know, from post-independence, 1965 onwards, the system of education that's been in existence in our country mainly focus on academics, book knowledge, not vocational skill education. So we are being taught or we teach our children book knowledge from kindergarten to university. So when they finish, it is very difficult for them to be absorbed into the workforce, why they are being limited. In fact, that reminds me, sometimes you see someone go up to university or upon completion of high school, that is when you want to determine what you want to be in future or in life. That shows retardation. Yes. That, 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 that shows yeah. something very wrong and negative in our education system. That shows our literacy level. That shows that you know, at an early age, it is important, for example, if like in other countries, to have career and guideline centers in schools, closely work with the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education. We counsel our people when they're younger, much younger. I knew what I wanted to be at the age of 14, and I am one. I might not get to where I suppose, but I, could, I, I am no longer where I used to be. So because I knew what I wanted to be. But in the Gambia, this is something also that affects us as a nation. And I think it is fundamental for us to all, uh, as writers to use our voice, to use our pen to talk about it. And this and many other reasons were what compelled that, that, that's me to write. That's absolutely true. Book, right? Yeah, we, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll move further. But, but regarding, for instance, the ed education system here, let, let's try to make certain distinctions. Um, for, for instance, during the First Republic, you also had um, vocational schools, didn't you? So perhaps there the problem was with the social attitudes. There was not much respect, as it were, for that sort of thing. Everybody wanted to be in academia, you know, go to high school, do your maths, physics, whatever, history, instead of maybe going to learn about um, carpentry, wood, um, 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 metal work, and that sort of plumbing, uh, all sorts of things. So there was this social attitude, isn't it? So here, if we're going to tackle it, what government invests is one thing, and what are the social attitudes that might perhaps discourage potentially brilliant people from going in? So you have these different chunks as if we're of issues to tackle here, isn't it? Yes, I quite agree with you. This is what we call L-A-G-G-E-R. In Kenya, the lager mentality, the mindsets of the people, mainly the youth who just want to sit at a particular Johnson and probably build castles in the air. And this doesn't just apply to Gambia, Africa as a continent. But here, for in our case, for example, uh, you know, we do not give that value.